Hello everyone. Okay, in this session, I'll be speaking about hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a very common condition which is encountered within the brain diseases. Broad view, let me speak what is hydrocephalus. What people, non-medical people know about hydrocephalus is hydrocephalus is accumulation of excess water in the brain. This accumulation of excess water causes an increase in intracranial pressure and the resultant symptomatology, which is sometimes can cause death if not treated. So let's go into the topic. I will show you some of the animation videos which are available on the YouTube. First, I'll be telling you what is hydrocephalus and then the most important one, what are the treatment approaches available for hydrocephalus? There are mainly two kinds of treatment, which I'll be telling you as it goes on. As a first step, let us try to understand what is hydrocephalus clearly. As I've told you before, hydrocephalus for a non-medical person means accumulation of excessive water in the brain. And this excessive water accumulation has, growth, has caused an increase in intracranial pressure. And this increase in intracranial pressure is life-threatening. So why is there water in the brain? Why is that water increasing? Try to understand. Okay, follow this video clip. Try to concentrate on my arm. Inside our brain, there are empty spaces. These spaces are, are called ventricles. Like you label the home, uh, uh, home number one, home number two, home number three. Similarly, these ventricles in the brain are numbered. These big ones, these semicircular ones are called the lateral ventricles, R ventricle number one and two. This one in between is called the third ventricle and this one is called the fourth ventricle. So there are four ventricles in our, in our brain. You can see very clearly in this one. These are the lateral ventricles, which are ventricle one and two. They are paid, so are called one and two, the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. Now see the entire skull, this is our brain, these are the ventricles, and see this blue one, this is the blood supply. This is the venous drainage of the brain. The blood from the brain is recircled back into the heart through these veins. Now coming to the CSF. These ventricles are filled with fluid. Why is this fluid, why is this fluid present within the brain? This fluid within the empty brain, within the cavities of the brain, these are the ventricles. These ventricles are filled with fluid, this green color one which I'm showing over here. Similarly, the fluid also present all around the brain, which you will be seeing in the later part of the animation. This fluid provides protection to the brain. I will give you an analogy. Imagine you have a box with ice cream into the box. Ice cream is similar to your brain. Soft structure, very important structure. Suppose I shake the box, your brain, that is ice cream will get injured. So the God has given protection against that injury. So the space between the box and the ice is filled with a lubricating cushioning fluid. This cushioning fluid is a CSF. This protects the brain against injury from the skull. Suppose there's a hit on the brain. The brain moves forward, but it may hit the skull. But CSF provides protection. And also CSF provides nutrition to the brain. So this CSF is produced from the choroid plexus, which are machines within the ventricles, which produce CSF. So see, so this CSF is being produced in the lateral ventricles from the first, third ventricle, they're going to third ventricle, then they're going to the fourth ventricle and they're going on over the surface of the brain. Here it provides lubrication and protection. From the surface of the brain, they go into the venous system and then into the heart. So this process of protection of CSF and absorption into the blood is a continuous process. Is a continuous process. So what happens? Sometimes this continuous process gets wrecked off. It gets damaged. There is some problem in this continuous process.
So when this continuous process, which is an equilibrium, gets some problem, what happens? Let's see. So this is a normal CSF flow. Daily, whatever amount is produced is gets absorbed. This recycling is continuously there within the brain. Suppose there is obstruction over here. So what happens? The CSF accumulates. The size of the ventricles increases. The pressure within the ventricle increases. And this causes compression of the brain tissue. In the last part, was it? Good grammar and spelling are important, but if you want to write essays that inspire. In this animation, I've seen what is ventricle? Why is there fluid within our brain, which is called CSF? What are the functions of CSF? And why hydrocephalus develops? So if there's overproduction of CSF, or obstruction of, or to the flow of CSF, or if there is any impairment in the absorption of the CSF back into the blood. These are the three conditions which causes excess accumulation of this water or CSF in the brain and resultant increase in pressure and the resultant compression of the brain parenchyma and the resultant danger to life. This pressure can ca cause vomitings, it can cause drowsiness, patient will slowly slip into unconsciousness, finally leading to death. I'll be explaining in your detail the various symptoms of hydrocephalus in my next video. But in this video, I will give you a brief overview regarding the treatment options available. Broadly, there are two, two treatment options available. One is called a shunt. Second one is called an endoscopic third ventriculostomy. Now, first I will show you what, what is a shunt. So, of all the options available, there are two major options available for the treatment of hydrocephalus. One is known as a VP shunt, a shunt. Second one is known as the endoscopic third ventriculostomy. The first video is, is of a hydrocephalus shunt, ventriculoperitoneal shunt. Let us analyze the word, ventriculoperitoneal shunt. What is a shunt? Shunt is bypassing something. So this device, is, this device pass, bypasses the obstruction within the ventricular system. And what is ventriculo? Ventriculo means the ventricles in the brain. As shown in this, in this picture, these are the ventricles in the brain where the CSF is accumulating. Peritoneal. This is the peritoneal. This is cavity within our abdomen. So in this procedure, we place a shunt. Shunt is basically a tube from the ventricles to the abdomen. So when the CSF is under pressure, when it's accumulating abnormally, this fluid bypasses the obstruction and this is passed into the our abdomen. Let's see the video. So one of the catheter tip is placed in the abdomen. The proximal tip is placed in the ventricle and this CSF, the excessive CSF, which is under pressure, goes from the ventricle to the abdomen, peritoneum within the abdomen. This decreases the pressure and this saves the life of the patient. This is the most common procedure which is employed throughout the world. Apart from, apart from the shunting VP shunt or the ventricular peritoneal shunt, we have one more procedure which is also done commonly. This is known as an endoscopic third ventriculostomy. Now let me show you the video of endoscopic third ventriculostomy. This animation explains you what is endoscopic third ventriculostomy. So ventriculostomy is a hole in the ventricle. As the name implies, it's done through an endoscopic or a keyhole approach. We place the endoscope into the ventricle. We puncture the floor of the ventricles. So once we puncture the floor of the ventricles, so once we puncture the floor of the ventricle, the CSF automatically goes from the ventricle directly into the venous supply, that is brain. So this again decreases the amount of CSF in the brain, decreases the pressure and saves the life of the patient. 
So I hope I'm very clear what is hydrocephalus and what are the two treatment op options, the ventricular peritoneal shunt and the endoscopic third ventriculostomy. In my next videos, I will explain in detail the advantages and disadvantages of each procedure and also the most frequently asked question, questions regarding the shunt and endoscopic third ventriculostomy. Thank you. Do subscribe for my channel.